The Earth from space is always a stunning sight, and as the technology develops, it gets even better, if a little voyeuristic. Hey guys, Amy here talking space with you today on DNews and specifically talking about looking at space. Space-based photography wasn't a top priority when we first started leaving our planet, but it quickly became a boon to science and a hugely popular spin-off, though the first images weren't exactly the stunning ones we're used to seeing today. The Earth was first imaged from space in 1946 from a 35mm motion picture camera mounted on a recovered Nazi V2 rocket launched from the US Army's White Sands Proving Ground in New Mexico. It's a grainy black and white image that it doesn't look too impressive, but it's pretty historic. Fast forward to the first manned spaceflight program in America, NASA's Mercury program, where photography was an afterthought. No one knew whether astronauts would be able to function in microgravity, let alone use a camera. And there were concerns that astronauts snapping pictures in orbit would be misconstrued by the Soviet Union as spy photographers and start a new war. NASA gave John Glenn an ANSCO Autoset 35mm camera manufactured by Minolta that was purchased in a local drugstore. The only thing space aged about it were the modifications that made it possible for Glenn to actually use it while wearing a pressure suit which he did during his 1962 orbital flight. Finally, thinking about imagery, NASA sent its mid-1960s Gemini astronauts into space with Swedish-made Hasselblad 550C medium-format cameras, again, standard technology of the day. The Hasselblads proved popular enough to fly to the moon on Apollo missions. The first mission to photograph the Earth from the moon, Apollo 8, took Hasselblad EL electric cameras with them. The astronaut set the distance, lens aperture, and shutter speed for the shot, then let the camera shoot and advance the film itself. There were also multiple lenses on these cameras, an 80mm normal lens and a 250mm telephoto lens. Apollo 11, the first mission to land on the moon, added a Kodak stereo close-up camera to the photography roster. Of course, none of these images could show us any real detail of the planet. Major features could be resolved, like mountains and cloud formations, but we didn't see cars on freeways. More than 40 years later, some modern photography experiments don't show much more detail. NASA's high-definition Earth viewing experiment uses commercial HD cameras mounted on the International Space Station to show a live stream of the planet, though all we can really see is clouds and major geologic features and a lot of ocean. But EarthCast has taken viewing the Earth from space to new levels, specifically new levels of detail. The company's cameras on the ISS don't show the majesty of our planet, they resolve details up to three feet across. That's enough detail to see individual cars, and because it's a streaming view, we can actually see them driving along the roads in full color, though the length of an individual shot is limited to 60 seconds. It's a stunning development that EarthCast hopes will highlight the things that draw humanity together, the living environment, humanitarian projects, and social events. But there's another side to this, and that's the prospect that this technology brings with it real-time monitoring, keeping an eye on, say, terrorist groups, which means that terrorist groups could keep an eye on targets, which is sort of the scary way to look at this incredible technology. So what do you guys think about the evolution of Earth photography from space? Is it highlighting all that's beautiful in the world or becoming a little too much like Big Brother is watching us? Let us know in the comments below. And by the way, if you love DNews, then prove your love by nominating us for a streamy. We've got a link in the description below. And of course, for more D-News every single day of the week, don't forget to subscribe.